We all have busy lives with a lot going on. There is taking the kids to school and the whole job that goes before that. There is work, school for others, meeting up with friends and the list goes on. But in all of that, we need to make sure that seeking God is first. And we need to make sure we seek God daily. In the Bible we read, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Psalm chapter 1 verses 1 to 2 We need God every day. Not once a week or twice a week or three times a week, but daily. Yeah, hold hands Some people think Sunday is enough, but it's not. They put off their spiritual growth for Sunday. But during the week, they do whatever they want to do. Work, party, watch series, everything right. but seek the Lord. Yet that is not how God wants us right. to live. God does not call us to be Christ-like or to pursue Christ-like things one day in the week. Great. He desires us to do all this every day. Great. For those of you who are married, please imagine with me Great. what your marriage would be like if you only communicated with your wife once a week. Would there still be a marriage? We need to seek God daily. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall mediate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 God had called Joshua to lead the people of Israel after Moses. Those were really big shoes to fill, and the advice he was given to be a great leader was not what you would expect. Get more men or lessons in how to make the strategic relationships and so on. Instead, he was told to meditate on God's word daily, day and night. And as he did that, he would have success. Joshua already developed the habit of being in God's presence continually when he was with Moses. Inside the tent of meeting, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face, as one speaks to a friend. Afterward, Moses would return to the camp, but the young man who assisted him, Joshua son of Nun, would remain behind in the tent of meeting. Exodus chapter 33 verse 11 Moses would go back to his tent, but Joshua remained behind. We don't know how long he stayed for, but it's clear that spending as much time with God as possible was his top priority. And is it any wonder why he did the amazing things he did? When he was sent out to spy out the land, he was one of two people who believed that God would be with them to possess the land out of an entire nation. Everyone else believed they were doomed. Two of the men who had explored the land, Joshua son of Nun and Caleb son of Jephunneh, tore their clothing. They said to all the people of Israel, the land we traveled through and explored is wonderful land. And if the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us safely into that land and give it to us. Numbers chapter 14 verses 7 to 8. Because he was in constant communion with God, he used him mightily. When he went into the promised land, God gave him great victory because Joshua's relationship with God was extremely close. He trusted God completely. On the day the Lord gave the Israelites victory over the Amorites, Joshua prayed to the Lord in front of all the people of Israel. He said, Let the sun stand still over Gibeon and the moon over the valley of Ajalon. 
So the sun stood still and the moon stayed in place until the nation of Israel had defeated its enemies. Is this event not recorded in the book of Jashar? The sun stayed in the middle of the sky and it did not set as a normal day. There has never been a day like this one before or since when the Lord answered such a prayer. Surely the Lord fought for Israel that day. Joshua chapter 10 verses 12 to 14. Look at what God did through one man's life. A man who put God first and sought God as much as he could. We need to spend time with God daily. Without his daily presence, how can we go through a day? He wants to talk to us daily. He wants to hear from us daily. He wants to help us through everything we are going through. He wants us to desire his presence. A check-in once a week won't do. Dwell in me and I will dwell in you. Live in me and I will live in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit of itself without abiding in, being vitally united to the vine, neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever lives in me and I in him bears much abundant fruit. However, apart from me, cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. John chapter 15 verses 4 to 5. I love this scripture because it emphasizes the importance of connection with God. We need to be in constant communion with Him. The more time we spend with Him, the stronger the connection gets. He is the vine and we are the branches. We are called to live in Him, and living is a daily thing. May we start walking in relationship with Him daily. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to seek You daily. We can't do life without You. That's a fact. We bring You our distractions, and we decide to seek You more. You said we should seek first the Kingdom of God and all these other things will be added to us, so that is what we want, to seek you more and more. We have busy for a long time. Holy Spirit, help us to see those things that are stealing our time and attention. As we seek you daily, our connection is growing stronger and stronger. Lord, as we reflect on your word, we are reminded of the importance of seeking you daily. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, guiding us through the challenges and uncertainties of life. Help us to delight in your law and to meditate on it day and night, finding joy and fulfillment in your presence each and every moment. Forgive us, Lord for the times when we have allowed the cares of this world to overshadow our need for you. Forgive us for the moments when we have prioritized our own desires and ambitions above seeking your face. Today, we repent and turn our hearts back to you, knowing that true satisfaction and fulfillment can only be found in you. Lord, we long to walk in the footsteps of your faithful servant, Joshua, who remained in constant communion with you, seeking your guidance and wisdom. Like him, may we prioritize spending time in your presence, knowing that it is in you that we find strength, courage, and direction for our lives. Teach us, O God, to cultivate a habit of prayer and meditation on your word, allowing your truth to penetrate our hearts and minds. May your word dwell richly within us, shaping our thoughts, desires, and actions according to your will. Help us to lean not on our own understanding, but to trust in you with all our hearts. Lord, we long to experience the fullness of your presence in our lives. 
we hunger and thirst for your righteousness, knowing that it is only through you that we find true fulfillment and satisfaction. Grant us the grace to seek you earnestly, to pursue intimacy with you above all else. As we journey through each day, may your spirit lead us and guide us, illuminating the path before us and empowering us to live lives that bring glory and honor to your name. Help us to bear fruit that is pleasing to you, touching the lives of those around us with your love and grace. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and unfailing love towards us. Thank you for the privilege of knowing you and communing with you daily. May our hearts be ever open to your leading, and may we walk in obedience to your will. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.